Hi everyone. Some of you might remember last year I did a short series on different serial killers from around the world. They were only short, about five minutes each, but because of one of those videos, I had actually missed a second marriage of that serial killer. It was then that I had been contacted by the daughter of that serial killer, Joseph Paul Franklin, and with her permission, we did some interviews because I thought it would be a great perspective for a series to see how a child of a serial killer had been raised by letters and phone calls from prison. So I hope you enjoy this series, Death Row Dad, excerpts from the daughter of serial killer, Joseph Paul Franklin. Whilst thinking about how I wanted to put together this series, one thing was sure, I don't want to take away from what this series is about, and that is what the child of a serial killer has gone through her entire life because of his actions. And so I've decided not to include Joseph's early life. There are plenty of videos out there if you're interested on Joseph Paul Franklin's early life, but I feel like that will take away from what this series is actually about. So my plan was to, and is still, to report on the crimes that he committed and those that he was charged and found guilty of, but I don't want to lose sight of what this series is really about, and that is the daughter's feelings and thoughts about her father growing up. You might hear the name Joseph Paul Franklin and it may not ring a bell, but I think a lot of people know the movie The People vs. Larry Flint and that's probably where the most notoriety is from these killings or, or attempted killings. Larry Flint is the owner of Hustler magazine, a pornographic magazine, and Joseph attempted to murder him for displaying interracial couples in Hustler magazine. Of course, Larry Flint didn't die, but he was paralysed below the waist, and later actually tried to get a stay of execution for Joseph Paul Franklin because he didn't believe in the death penalty. The man who shot me was never apprehended for several years. Uh, he had um, been prosecuted and convicted from, from killing some more people that were all racially mo motivated crimes. He was an avowed racist himself. And uh, he supposedly had uh, shot me over a black and white photo feature that we had published in a magazine. Or that was what uh, instigated it. I'm opposed to the death penalty. I think he should spend the rest of his life in prison. Before we get into any of Joseph's earlier crimes, there's something I wanted to clear up, which really kind of stumped me for a while there. Whilst I was doing my research and listening to and downloading the Kindle version of Joseph Paul Franklin, The True Story of the Racial Killer, written by Jack Rosewood and others, there were some discrepancies in a couple of different passages regarding children that Joseph Paul Franklin had fathered. I contacted the author and he gave me permission to use some short clips from the audiobook. So I'm just going to show you those now because in all of my research, most people except for Jack also missed the second marriage that Joseph had in the 70s. He had a first marriage in the late 60s which didn't last very long, and neither did this one. So the confusion is that they both had children, and I don't think that is the case. Also, there's a discrepancy about the daughter that he did have and when she was born, because Joseph's killing spree only went from 1977 to his capture in 1980, and she was 
actually born in 1977, not 1979, as the audiobook suggests. So that was important for me because, as far as I'm aware, this is his only child. But if anyone has any information to suggest otherwise, then you're more than welcome to contact me and I'll be able to look into that. In 1968, James Jr. met 16-year-old Bobby Louise Dorman, and within a couple of weeks, the two wed. The couple later had a daughter, but the relationship was doomed from its inception. Franklin, following in his parents' footsteps, repeatedly beat Bobby and was arrested by the Mobile Police numerous times for misdemeanor assaults. Franklin was truly his father's son in this respect. About the only thing that he did not inherit from his parents was their alcoholism as Franklin rarely drank and was not known to get drunk. Ultimately, Franklin quickly learned that family life was not for him, as he divorced his wife after less than a year of marriage and moved to the Washington, D.C. area to join the American Nazi Party. In January 1979, Franklin met and married an Alabama woman named Anita Cardin. Cardin knew that Franklin was a racist, even a militant one, but she did not know about his life as a one-man death squad. Cardin knew her husband as James Cooper, who she believed traveled a lot in his job as a plumber. She never asked her husband any questions and was always happy when he returned from his business trips with thick stacks of cash. The Coopers first took up residence in Montgomery, Alabama, and then later in Franklin's hometown of Mobile. Although the two eventually had a daughter, domestic bliss eluded the couple as Franklin was usually gone, and when he was home, abuse was the norm. For Franklin, the love of a woman did nothing to placate his hate. By late 1979, he was compelled to keep killing. In this and upcoming episodes, I'll refer to Joseph Paul Franklin's daughter by the name of Sierra. This isn't her real name. However, these excerpts are interesting, given the clips you have just heard from the audiobook in regards to Joseph's drinking and also his second marriage where he went by the name Cooper. His wife never knew that he had changed his name to Joseph Paul Franklin in the mid-70s. These excerpts will vary from crying to laughing to anything in between as they were very emotional interviews. I was going to say, I'm sorry, I missed I missed this marriage in my research. Normally I'm pretty good with the research, but I because I didn't realise till, till you'd written that you, he had been married twice. How long was he married to your mum for? How long were they married? When, I don't know. I, left her, I think he left for a year. She got him for abandonment and he wanted to remarry her. But when she found out she was 16, she found out she was pregnant. He took her to Georgia and married her under James Anthony Cooper. They went to Atlanta. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. so she was really young when, when they got married. And look, he got her house on Ann Street, a nice house. He had a two car. Um, he had her clothes. He money or money, just enough for the bills and food. Okay, he took care of us. Okay, he might have been robbing banks or whatever he was doing. But look, he was, look, uh, so I'll start with you. I, 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 I at least he was taking care of us. Yeah. And he was taking care of me. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't being abused. Nor were having feet no me or to add more back in my coming in there when I was asleep. I mean, come on. And I've had my problems with drugs and alcohol. Yeah, I have. You know what? They said they run off on a killing spree. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's weird. That's right. I said just one time. I said my daddy used to be an alcoholic. He used to drink. I said my daddy stopped drinking and started killing people. I just so I think I just keep drinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're you're funny. You're funny. I'm glad you I'm glad you got the kick. You said to humor. <laughs> it makes sense. I'm in the bottle. I know that he's an alcoholic. He needs to smoke. And he, but he quit drinking. He started killing people. Yeah. I think I just keep drinking. This is what he quit drinking. Never mind. Go ahead and start running around. Shit, fuck. All right. Oh my god, sometimes you sometimes, sometimes you've got to laugh or you'll just cry, I think. Sometimes it is so, sometimes it just gets so stupid, you don't, you, you go, you know what? <laughs> no, it's true, I mean, no, I don't care what they say. I'm a dope head, I'm this, I'm that. Yeah, I am. I've done about every kind of drug you take. 
put on a dope head. Not today, I'm not. Yeah, but these people, I they can't, they don't, they have, they will yeah. never have, and I won't ever have any idea of what you went through or what you go through. No idea. I hope you've enjoyed this first episode of Death Row Dad. There's a lot more to come in the next episode. I'll go through some of Joseph's killing spree from 1977 to 1980, as well as more excerpts from Sierra about growing up with a dad behind bars.